Hello everyone and welcome to the stream. Hope you all are having a wonderful day today. If you're not, you know, hang in there, get better. <laughs> It'll be good tomorrow. Uh, yeah, what have I got in my pocket? Oh, I got stuff from my kid in my pocket. Let's take that out so it's not weighing me down. All right, how's everybody doing tonight? How's everybody doing? Zaid asked me how the big project at work is going, and uh, uh, it's going well. I mean, we, we launched the new software, business management of software for the company, and uh, we're up and running, and it's mostly good. It's, it's a lot of work. We're getting used to it. But the, uh, the ability to look into the system and see the orders and how everything works in the new way isn't the same as it was in the old way and there's some information that you don't see at all so if you want to make predictions on let's say the next six weeks of production uh you can't tell anymore <laughs> it's I'm, I'm sort of blind in the system to understand the long-term or let's say mid-term outlook of the business and i'm struggling with it i I don't want to run on a shorter time frame and just react to whatever comes up in the schedule and everything in the new system is happening automatically. So I got to say, uh, without my without my data, I feel a little bit out of control. Like I don't quite have the same, like if you got in your car and the speedometer just didn't work, how would you know how fast to drive? You'd have to go by the tack, right? Well, when I'm at, I think it's about 2,800 RPMs, I should be going around the speed limit. <clears throat> but you're kind of guessing, right? You're trying to use a different tool to judge your speed without having a speedometer. It, it might work, you might be fine, but it, uh, it would probably make you a bit uncomfortable. So that's, that's where I'm at, you know? We're using the new tools, but I, I want my speedometer back. <laughs> So, yeah, there you go. Uh, Adam Darnell says, finally catching one of these. Well, hello, Adam. Darth Stick says, yo, I never get to catch one live. All right, well, you're catching one live. Hellscream says, hi. Man, there's a bunch of new names in here. A bunch of people I haven't seen before. Are, uh, are all the new people part of the Discord? I hope you guys are all part of our Discord community. We've got a really fantastic Discord community. If, um, if you're not, you need to click the link above, down below, something. Get on over, join our Discord community. It's a fantastic place to be. Which one? Which one? The Lokewood or Holocrons? There should be, uh, or, or is it a different question? Darth Stick says on the Discord, it's awesome. All right. Well, I tell you what. Um, if we hit 50 likes before I'm done with my Lokewater GAC tonight, I'll do a giveaway over on the channel. We'll give away another $25 gift card, and uh, I'll set that up. But we got to get to 50 likes by the time I'm done with Lokewater GAC. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Just another consumer says, welcome to the G.I. Joe Club, Loquiter. <laughs> Yo, Joe. Welcome to the G.I. Joe Club. Man, these Gungans are looking interesting, though, aren't they? Like, I don't know. Let's go take a look at this new Gungan. Let's uh, Gungan Bombardier. All right, let's get in here and take a look. Gungans, let's read some text. We got a whole wall of text to read, I'm sure. I was defeated by the wall of text with Queen Amidala. So let's see if that continues to be the case for the Gungan. Oh my goodness, look at this. It's only four lines of text for his basic ability. What have they done to my game? <laughs> Deal physical damage, tripled if the enemy shocked, and then gain speed up. Simple. 
All right, we know what's going to happen with the basic. Deal physical damage to an enemy. Deal an additional instance for each offense up, down, healing immunity, speed down, present on the target. Always deal five instances of damage to separatist enemies. <laughs> okay, so we can do extra damage up to four times, so up to five different uh, on, on any character, but we just always do five to separatists. Cool. Remove one stack of recharge from the shield generator per instance of damage. All right, all right, so we're, so we're clocking down the shield generator. All right. Deal physical damage to all enemies, inflict ability block on them. Separatist enemies are, uh, this is nice. An AOE with ability block, we always like those. Boba Fett, uh, you know, well, <laughs> JML, characters like that. There's a lot of stuff with uh, area effect ability blocks, pretty nice. All right, separatist enemies are inflicted with protection disruption. Remove three stacks of recharge from the allied shield generator. It gains two stacks of plasma shielding. Swap turn meter with another Gungan ally and gain frenzy. This ability seems really, really good. Holy cow. That's a lot of... I mean, it's, it's not that complicated. It's pretty simple, right? We deal all kinds of damage. Inflict ability, well, I don't know how much damage, but we're going to deal damage. We're going to have ability block. We're going to remove stacks of recharge, gain stacks of plasma shielding, swap turn meter to give another Gungan ally. The net Gungan ally is going to go, Frenzy is going to trigger, and we're going to get another turn. So, wow, that's pretty good. If we swap with a Gungan that has really low turn meat, oh, I see, that's, that's so good. Because with swap characters, you typically want to swap with somebody else that has high turn meter. But with this frenzy added in, you can swap turn meter with your lowest turn meter Gungan. Have the guy that you like go first. Have this guy go second. Reset. Give him another turn. Take another turn. It's pretty nice. I like it. And I can actually understand the ability. It doesn't go on for 17 pages. At the start of the battle, Gungan Boombadir loses 75% max health, gains that much max protection, has a 30% defense penetration and offense. When allied shield generator is active, things defeated by Gungans can't be revived? <gasps> what? I mean, it's really good against Separatists, right? You kill Geos, they can't come back. You kill Robots, Wat Tambor can't bring them back. Uh, so, I, I... I... Oh, it's only Gungan attackers. Interesting. So, he's an attacker. Uh, okay, okay. Let's, let's keep reading. Whenever Gungan Boomadir uses a special ability, gain 5% defense penetration and offense for the rest of the battle. Stacking, nice. Uh, so ramps up. While a Gungan ally has retribution, they're immune to target lock. Okay. Interesting. So enemies defeated by Gungan attackers can't be revived. That's so good. That's, that's good against so many things. We needed, I feel like we needed another team with the no revive mechanics because there's a lot of even like man I hope this team works against star killer that would be pretty nice I just put down the star killer characters and they can't be brought back by Visus Mar you could do it with um, Ray teams I'm not sure Gungans are going to beat Galactic Legend Ray but um, you know maybe if they're good at cutting down a few enemies then you can come back in and clean up ray that's nice i like it i like this also an attacker okay so they're both attackers so the likelihood of killing with a gungan attacker is pretty good we got two of them already ah, i like i like the gungans seem interesting to me they seem pretty cool All right, let's catch up on chat. Oh, just another consumer says uh, G.I. Joe was for the Grand Inquisitor. Ah, uh, I gotcha. 
I gotcha. I didn't pick up on that. I was slow. Maybe it's due to my GI tract. I don't know. Um, yeah, we're all ready to relic him. Look at this. Done. Done and ready to go. Next, uh, next. well, this week's update, when we hit this week's update, we'll have a Grand Inquisitor. I'll probably only get him to, like, Relic 5. I'm completely out of bronzium wiring and uh, pretty much ran myself out of the, slight, uh, the uh, signal data getting my last Inquisitor to Relic 7. So we probably won't get him all the way to Relic 7 this week, but he'll be Reliced. Get him up to, like, Relic 5. My third sister's in pretty good shape, too. I, I think we got, like, uh, I want to say, like, 28 shards this last time. Something like that. Maybe it was spread out over two days. No, I don't think so. I, I think we got somewhere around 30. So we're at 2.30 now. We got to get to 3.30. So it's going to be about three more um, territory battles. And we'll get this third sister going. I'm going to have a lot of powerful characters that I really got to try to get focused, right? Because I, we've got the, uh, the Dark Trooper Moff Gideon that we want to work on. We've got Malakos that we need to relic. We're going to get third sister here soon. And the Cal Kestis journey, boof, I'm still such a long way off on this. Um, 85, I'm on the 85 tier, so the six star tier for all these characters. But uh, for single shard drops, that's still quite a long ways to go. So in the short term, we got, uh, we got some, some stronger characters that we need to relic. We're going to work on the B2 next. I've already got him almost ready to go. I might get a two relic week. If we get enough stuff, we might actually get a two relic week for the first time in, in quite a while. And the B1 uh, might only go to relic one, but at least that'll allow us to start using a Datacron with our Grievous team. So take what we can get. And then we'll roll into this Death Trooper, Storm Trooper, Dark Trooper, Moff Gideon, Malakos, Third Sister. And, uh, you know, whatever I can get out of the Cal Kestis journey, make sure I stay on track over there. Titan says, hey, I appreciate your content. I had a question about the Executor Guide following as a new player. Should I be spending Get One on Wampa and Hyoda before anything else? That used to be the case. But Hermit Yoda and Wampa are both in the raid currency now. And in the early game, I would say if you really want Hermit Yoda and Wampa for some reason, uh, start buying them with this currency out of the uh, Mark II raid tokens. That'll interfere with some of the stuff that you also want to buy with your Mark II raid tokens. Uh, so you can kind of split it between here and the guild events but the uh, the guild event store there's a lot of this material now that's pretty efficient to buy out of this store these purple parts uh, these gold parts for making relic characters uh, especially the gold parts you don't want to ha ever have to farm these so i would say very early in the game if you need to use your get one use it on the gold stuff here the purple stuff if you need to and then later on you can switch over to uh, Wampa and Hermit Yoda but if you really want those characters I would say in the first like six to eight months of play uh, just focus on getting them over here out of this shop with this type of currency uh, if you were to just say well I'm gonna buy one every time we complete a raid I'm gonna buy one set of five shards uh, or two you know you'll get there eventually and the raid payout I think I actually have a raid payout here all right so Sirjunda is accelerated Ooh, look at that nice that's gonna help me with my Calcastus journey <laughs> um, okay so if you get 
like like the maximized amount of raid token one, you get sixteen five. So if you spend like fifteen hundred or twenty five hundred uh, of these every time on a wampa, it still gives you plenty to spend on gear. So that's what I would suggest. Are there any other addendums you would make to that guide after a few months? Um, I mean, the real addendum to the guides, uh, I, I did the executor guides and the profundity guides last year for free to play one to 85 and then continuing on through your first big journey. And the big addendum is in the current environment, you know, buy the hyperdrive bundle, buy some light speed bundles and then work on your first big capital ship. That's the biggest addendum. You know, don't, don't wait to get started building your account. The, uh, the light speed bundle packs are super efficient in terms of what you get for your money. So that's kind of way to the, play, the way to play the game these days. The Profundity Journey has a pretty big detour. Biston's ship got taken off of the fleet node, which is pretty annoying. Uh, I think the only thing on the Executor Journey was uh, if you farm Harrison Dula for Phoenix, she's coming off of a, a hard node now. She's not in the cantina anymore either. They've taken her off the cantina node. But the executor journey is still pretty clean for a new player. Just get in there and do the thing, do the stuff. Boris Balkan says, good luck. <laughs> Titan, I would. There are a couple of characters worth buying to grease the wheels of hard farms, but Hermit Yoda and Wampa are the big priorities. I can agree to that. Uh, Hellscream says, is Second Sister used in the Reva mission? I think Second Sister is typically the one that gets left out of the Reva mission, right? I, th I think she gets left out of the, the Reva mission. But second sister is the one who has the tie interceptor so second sister is the pilot right i gotta check these things to make sure that i'm not misspeaking all right come on this is not funny empire tie interceptor there it is yeah, so she's she's in the tie interceptor. Yeah, we should probably get this uh, finished out. Yeah, I didn't do that. Oops. <clears throat> Storm Pooper says, "Hey, time to rise." Hellscream says, "I saw that you relic seven her." Um, I have no patience for events this is the thing like I, I this game is my hobby i like i like it as a hobby it's fun i like streaming as a hobby it's still fun to me i love being here with you guys and and hanging out um but like when i'm doing these events i do not have the patience to sit around and play these events 50 times for six hours so like I've heard that when you're at Relic 5, these events are pretty tough. I just put all my Inquisitors at Relic 7, put uh, Galactic Legends mods on everybody and said, let's just get this event done. And I was in and out of the event in 54 minutes, including mod changes, and I was just done with it. So, I, yes, if you look at Second Sister, I put Relic materials on her that I didn't need to. So in that sense, if you're following what I've done, probably only put Relic 5 onto the second sister. But, uh, but I just Relic 7 all of the Inquisitors because I don't want to mess with it. Don't want to mess with it. <laughs> Seer was accelerated today. Yeah, nice, by an Irishman, nice. Hey DL, would you do an account review? I started right around when you started the Lex Talionis account. Curious what you think. Ah, sure. I mean, it could be beneficial. Uh, drop your ally code in there and we'll take a look at it. Uh, maybe between the GACs. It 
Second sister isn't used for the Reva mission, but she's usable in the event. It's just harder to win with her. JQ says, I like to overkill as well. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing with the Ewoks. When I was setting up to do the Ewok event, the C-3PO event on my Abtisio account, I'm just like, Relic 12, Paplu, Relic 12, Elder, put good mods on them. I can put six dot mods on these characters now and just, like, you know, get get through the event. I messed around with it a little bit at first, but after failing a couple times, I was just like, mm, psh, put the gear on them. <laughs> Let's get this done. So, yeah. And on, on the Abtisio account, man, I struggled so hard with the gas event. Like, I kept trying the gas event over and over and over again with only a relic shock t and uh, i i could not get it i had to relic the kenobi before i could get it so yeah i i more prone to just gear up the characters and not spend hours trying to get it with minimum gear it's a philosophical thing i suppose and if you want to do it for the least possible resources that's a fun challenge for some people all right, let's take a look at this Grand Arena. Um, if you do try to send me your ally code, Adam, just make sure you put dots in it. So do like three numbers and then a dot and then three numbers and a dot. If you put spaces in between, it thinks you're trying to do a phone number and it won't post it. All right, let's take a look at my opponent for the Lokewater account here. We got Linky. The Brotherhood of Darkness, 9.7 million galactic power. We just crossed 9 million with this account. Opponents at 9.7. 4-2 in ships. That's almost all the ships you could want. 5-5 five, five in characters. Uh, if we look at Galactic War Battles 1, for anybody new to the channel who hasn't watched these videos before, when you look at Galactic War Battles 1, if you play that every day and you just sim it, um, it'll be about 4,400 galactic battles per year. So you can look at this number and you see that it's 22,000 and you know that that's, you know, about five years worth of play. So you can kind of tell how old accounts are by looking at that number. Assuming that people grab their Galactic War sim every day. Um, I think it's fun just to kind of see how old the accounts are. So about five years old. All right. First things first, we've got Leviathan to deal with. Oops, somebody said I need to use this button and just take all the capital ships to the top. So I remember to do that. All right, so we've got uh, Leviathan, Profundity, Executor, Malevolence, Negotiator. It's all the stuff, right? We've got all the stuff. Um, comeuppance isn't built up yet. And Jedi Counselor, everything else is... Or 12 or higher. It's weird looking at that upside down. Um, I suppose I'll get used to it. Over here we've got Galactic Legends. We got five of uh, six of them. What? That's interesting. A Relic 9 Darth Brevin. Oh, because he's only got five Zetas on the Master Luke. Interesting. So this Darth Revan pops up higher than the, <laughs> the uh, Jedi Master Luke on the on the power spectrum. Uh, so six Galactic Legends. He's got all the same stuff we've got. And then we've got Leia and he doesn't yet. He's got Malak at nine, of course, because of the ship stuff. He's got Malakos Relic 7, Malgus Relic 7. Uh, a lot of the requirement characters. He's obviously working on Leia. Here's Drogon. Does he have Leia? Maybe he has, I see like all of the requirements here. So does he have like Leia unlocked, but not leveled up yet? No, I don't see her. Okay. But he's got lots of toys. He's got lots of toys. The typical stuff that we expect to see. Fastest non-GL character is Admiral Piet, 346. That's a pretty fast Piet. Next, Mara Jade. She's over 330. I'm, no, 321. Oh, that's a precipitous drop in speed. Okay, all right. Uh, let's look down here at Revan. What are we looking at here? 
309, okay. So we're going to have a speed advantage in most matchups. That's good news for us. Moff Gideon, not relict. You guys know what I think of Moff Gideon? Do you know how much I like Moff Gideon? I'll show you how much I like Moff Gideon. I think you guys already know, but but let's let's check. Let's check how much I like Moff Gideon. Lex Talionis account. Ooh, we're overblown on energy. I, I went to the store. Let's use that up. All right. So, Lex Talionis account. First relic, Moff Gideon. First relic on the entire account. <laughs> this guy. This guy is a powerhouse. His basic attack does tons of damage. We can upgrade that by now. Look at this. What's this one? Extra damage there, too. Yeah, let's take it. Control the situation. Not going to put a Zeta on that. And this one, uh, yeah, sure. Let's, let's get Moff Gideon finished out. We got some Omega materials to spare. So, yeah, I think seeing an account like that with that much stuff and Moff Gideon not relict, it's an opportunity. Moff Gideon is so good. Even if you don't want to use him with troopers, there's a way that you can use him with Padme. If you give him the Zeta on that ability, his middle skill will give everything 100 percent protection up which in the Padme team is a lot of stacks of courage and uh, if you're fighting against a team of characters that have more health than protection each instance is 40 percent of their health so as long as their health is higher than the protection um, that many courage stacks just straight up kills an enemy so things that have like their protection is converted to health if the nihilist lead or a lord vader lead stuff like that um it's insane you could just kill things in one hit um and, and some bounty hunter teams and things like that any character that has more health than protection can get one shotted by the by the gidme team so that's uh, a lot of reasons to build a ye old moff gideon Boris Balkan says seven star Leviathan. Ouch. Boris says I give up trying to relic Gideon. Too many other characters to develop. Just another consumer sells. He, he well, it'd be nice, but I have twenty others first. Well, I'm gonna rearrange your guys' priorities. Think about this. Just you know, when you're laying in bed tonight and you're just about to drift off to sleep, think to yourself. The engineer who loves gaming efficiency says Moff Gideon is one of the best relics in the game. I wonder why that is. You know, ponder that, right? As you're falling asleep, maybe you'll dream about it. Maybe it'll rise in priority to the top of your characters to relic list. I'm telling you guys, one of the fastest characters in the game, relic him to give him another 20 speed, Puts him at 198 base speed. It's easy to get that character into the, the 330, 340 range. And just outspeed teams, drain turn meter with a Padme team, kill stuff, uh, dominate, you know, use your troopers to dominate the, the resistance teams that you inevitably see on defense. Um, Gideon is a strong character, guys. Simple kit, but very strong. In a trooper team, in a Padme team, in a Empire team, like put him in with your Mara Jade team. And the difference between being Relic and not Relic, that 20 speed is massive. And he does a lot of damage, and once he gets charged up, he has a day, area effect days. It's a lot of, a lot of things to love about Gideon. Okay, let's take a look at uh, defenses. Bottom zone here. We got a Qui-Gon, we can use Radis there we've got Grievous I mean we can Wampa that or save Wampa for the back I probably want to save Wampa for the back wall right we'll use Jedi here or something we'll try to use SLKR here if we can try to get a kill there and uh, Ray 
Mm, Ray with the level six Datacron. We could use Kenobi, or we could try to use Sith Eternal Emperor. Relic seven. Let's see if she's got massive amounts of offense. If she's got tons of offense, it might be a no-go for Sith Eternal. Ten grand, that's pretty good. Health primary there, offense, and speed. Yeah, if one of these others was uh, offense, I'd, I'd probably make both of these offense. If you could. I like Ray to just hit like a freight train. I think that's, I think that's the better build for her, because with a lot of like C counters and stuff like that, if she has enough damage to one shot Sith Eternal, um, she'll, her team will easily kill C's team, then she just has to kill C. Darth Bane, has Darth Bane been fixed, y'all? I, I haven't seen anything in the news where Darth Bane is fixed, so he still, you know, two character kills pretty much anything in the game, right? Like him and Sith Assassin or Marauder or something like that. You just murder people. Kyber Soze says, I have the same GP as this guy. My Moff Gideon is also still gear 12, and I break into Kyber 1. Not saying he's a bad character. I'm not sure he's quite the deal breaker you're making him out to be. All right. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. Do I have a confirmation bias on Gideon? Do I just like Imperial Troopers so much that I'm that I think Gideon is better than he is? Or is it because statistically I would look back and when I think about Moff Gideon, how many matches I've won, and I feel like that's because of Moff Gideon. See, the difference between having Moff Gideon in your trooper team and not, I mean, once you get your Moff Gideon going really fast, you can take out these Starkiller teams with really fast Marge aids, up to 330 speed from my, my account. If you don't have that really fast Gideon, you're never gonna get Admiral Piet to 380 speed, right? My off Gideon's like 380 speed, he's acting at 400 speed under the Veer's lead. You're not gonna get close to that with Piet. So the best you can do with Piet is about a 300 speed Mara Jade, something like that. It, it, it makes a big difference in what counters you can use your troopers against. And maybe I just like the troopers too much. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I, I think Moff Gideon is like Wat Tambor. He's one of those characters that once you have him at relic level, you can plug him into so many teams. All he has to do is take a turn and he cuts the enemy's damage in less than half, right? It reduces the damage by 50%, reduces the crit chance, or crit damage, I can't remember which, but I mean, just that ability alone on some teams? I don't know. It's really good. He's a really good character. <laughs> I'm a big fan. You haven't convinced me, Kyber Soze. I don't, I don't think I have a confirmation bias or that uh, I'm overhyping Gideon. I think he's really that useful. I truly believe that. Is he as good as a Terran Malakos? Well, if you have the right team for Malakos, Malakos is better. If you don't have the right team for Malakos, I think uh, Gideon's better. But then again, I don't have my Malakos relic yet, so maybe when I relic him, I will be converted and become a true believer. Let's see what we want to do here. We want a decent Datacron, but it doesn't have to be that good. Dark side mechanics all over the place. Light side mechanics. This is a Mandalorian Datacron, which I don't really have Mandalorian, so we can use this, I guess. Crit avoidance deflection. Pfft. That's not great. Not great for this team. We'll just use this one, because 
might as well. All right, so moral of the story. When we work on Holdo, if she's got, how do we get rid of the taunt? We don't really. Annoying. All right, so we may have to just outright kill Holdo. We'll work on Ray, get her down. We'll one shot. I mean, the other thing I could do is just one shot the Holdo instantly. And I'll be fine, I'm pretty sure. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'd do that. I'd just kill Holdo. Just use Kenobi, reset Tano, kill Holdo instantly. This is not a Holdo Kron. Resistance allies can't be defeated until each ally that had 100% health at the start of the battle has fallen below 100% at least once. What? Okay, resistance allies can't be defeated until each ally that had 100% health at the start of the battle has fallen below 100% at least once. So we can't insta-kill her. Okay, so back to the original plan. We just target Ray with Kenobi. And uh, once we get the ult, kill Kylo. It'll take a minute, but we'll get it. We will get it. That makes Sith Eternal, like, Sith Eternal doesn't work at all here then, right? Because he would link people up, but they wouldn't necessarily ever drop below 100%. If they hadn't dropped below 100%, Sith Eternal could be stuck behind the taunt for Holdo. Never damage Ben Solo enough to, even if you did your ult, they're immune to dying. Interesting. Interesting. You'd have to do the ult twice to make it work. Okay. So Sith Eternal, maybe not a good plan here. I think we're fine. Okay, so let's get in on Ray. Start the party. Pass it back to Kenobi. Pass it back to Cat. Pass it back to other Kenobi. A random Kenobi 07. Let, yeah, let's go in. Let's go ahead and see if we can get damage here. I don't mind triggering an instance of the Whirlwind if we have to. Put damage immunity back on her. Okay. Okay. 95%, of course. We're like... I have to get hold... Oh, man. This is obnoxious. So I, I can't auto kill him. This is, oh, what? Did Holdo, did Holdo go below 100%? It's kind of weird. All right, um, we'll do this. Absorb the alt. Okay, back on Ray. Um, do this again. And then we'll reset. Ooh. Kenobi got decked by that ability. Oh, good gravy. We missed. We whiffed. All right. Let's get Holdo out of here because this is getting annoying. Um, kill her. Kill him. Can't keep him dead. Come on now, guys. All right. Get Ray. Get her out of here. Oh, not quite enough damage. Assist. Come on. What? How not? 
How did that not kill Ray? All right. This is nasty. We're going to lose our Kenobi now. Oh, no, we're not. Let's try to protect our Kenobi here. Okay, Ray, do your thing. All right. Uh, let's kill Ben Solo for the 85th time. Kill Ray. Kill Holdo. That's super annoying. Okay, so I finally figured it out. It took me a second, but Ben Solo can be killed because he's not resistance. Holo, uh, Ray couldn't be killed because Holdo hadn't been below 100%. So I, was, I, I for, wasn't thinking about the fact that Ben Solo actually wasn't resistance, so he didn't apply to the Datacron. Figured it out, though. Figured it out. A little slow to the party, but we got it. Eventuary. I think I changed Kylo's mods, didn't I? Didn't we give him some better mods here? A little bit better, not much. I had him modded for tenacity for some reason. I don't remember why I did that. But, you know, we had, we had Kylo modded for tenacity. Kyber says, I definitely use him. Gideon's 308 at gear 12. I could put on the three pieces to get the extra 20 speed, but I just haven't needed it. Moff Gideon is awesome with Dark, uh, the Dark Trooper Moff Gideon. Yeah, Ziggy, yeah, Ziggy and Benny Lau are talking about the same thing. Yeah, the, the Ben, the Ben Solo is not. Uh, these are not the resistance you're looking for. All right, dark side ally stuff, crit damage, deflection, fine. Still working on <clears throat> more Datacrons from the new set to try to get better ones. Um, am I better off just going for the quick swap, giving Kylo a lot of turns, getting to the alt faster? I think maybe, maybe I am. This team has no respect for a tank anyway. They target whoever they want for the most part. Well, maybe we do this. He's explicitly called out in some of the Datacron mods. Okay. We'll do this. Get a stun going for us. Oof. All right. Give a turn. Use a turn. Reset. Use a stun. Okay. Huck's going down. That's fast. Okay. Come on, big guy. Get him. Officer taking some hits. This should... Oh, come on now. Did I have uh, blind on or something? I must have had blind on me. Like that. Like that blind right there. Um, we're going to take another basic attack here. That way when we're blinded, we can stab him, recover some life. Um, yeah, well, we can do there. Okay. Take some ability. Swuss. Dodge. Just keep ramping. I feel like it's fine to go. F oh, 
I was going to say, I think it's fine to go for a full alt. But uh, we killed him before we got there. All right, that's uh, that's good. Good, good, good. Two, two for two on the GL fights. Let's do let's do some Rogue One shenanigans here against this team. Let's see if there's a data crown that I want to use. Oof! I really need to get working on the new set. <laughs> Extra health, crit damage resistance. Do we have one that just has offense on it? This gets some offense. But that's a lot of dark side mechanics and Sith stuff, so I'm going to save that. Bonus mechanic for light side characters. That's a rubble fighter thing. All right, I'm struggling. I don't I don't see a data crown that I even want here. I guess we'll take this one. You know what? Just get rid of it. I won't even use a data cron. Let's go in. Cron free. No O cron. Alright. Caddy Mundi, we can take the taunt off of him pre. Oh, no, we can't. We got nothing to take the taunt off of him. Okay. Let's see if we can steal turn meter. Sure, that's nice. All right. Do a basic over here on Anakin. I guess it doesn't matter. He's just gonna get the foresight back anyway. Okay. Steal turn meter again if we can. Um. Yeah, let's go ahead and drop the nuke here. Steal from Anakin. We don't want to use the heal up because right now Jin is low life and they'll attack her. If we heal up, then we run the risk that they're going to want to come attack. Now we can uh, do this. And we got to try to, oh, I was going to say we got to try to get Cassian back, but it was too late. Too late. All right, where's my Gungans? Where's my Gunga boys? Got some droids to kill here. Okay, what can we use to kill these droids that's not very good? Um, Ray, potentially. Uh, because, uh, you know, damage immunity or healing immunity is a good thing against this team. Isn't it? Maybe. What, what do we need? We need really high damage. What if, what if we use bounty hunters instead and just kind of hedge our bets and say, you know what? We're going to take Mando. And if things get out of control, we've always just got the ability to disintegrate the enemy and be satisfied with that. Do we want Grief Karga in here? Save him for a Fennec team? We could just put him in here, I guess. Keep ourselves alive. Make sure we get all the kills. And then uh, we can have a Fennec team somewhere on the back wall with other bounty hunters. Be fine. Let's go. I'm waffling on using some crystals to refresh and get him in a few days. <clears throat> Ray Ben is great and all, but I don't think it'll keep me in Kyber too. What do you think will keep you in Kyber too? All right, let's do the mass assist. Oh, that's still. I figured if we did a little bit of damage, it would be the lowest health target, but I guess not. Blink. All right. He's in stealth now. Pretty annoying, really. It's going to be a while to get to our contract if we can't hit the weakest enemy. Uh, sure, let's just try to 
damage L3. This L3 is pretty sturdy, all things considered. Just put it on auto. You know, I, I feel like I have the durability here is fine. We just need to get to the point where L3 is the lowest health enemy, which we're really not doing. This is amazing. Okay, maybe I can't put it in auto. Let's do this. Okay, still stealthed over there. Where are we at on the contract? He should be out of stealth now. 60%. That is not fantastic. All right, let's do it again. This should get us to 80%, right? Okay. Oof getting killed it's not great all right get the taunt back up get back over here and next time we get a turn with him out of stealth ooh that was good we got contract we got contract gentlemen we have contract all right let's do this and this and then I think we just get rid of that first. Wow. Disintegrated. Completely disintegrated. Doesn't care. Disintegrate didn't work. Disintegrate didn't work. Interesting. Poof. Disintegrate didn't work. Is it not a revive mechanic? How is how is how is Lady Vacuum able to revive from a disintegrate? Does it not say can't be revived? I'm suspicious. Anyone know if Darth Sidious with the Omicron can beat Galactic Legend Leia? Ooh, I don't know that. I don't know that. I think it would be a pretty big challenge. All right, what are we going to do with G G G Grievous here? What do we got for Grievous? Maybe just take in some Jedi? We could do like uh, Revan, Mace, and uh, Luke. That's a lot of power in one team, but we could we could do something like this. I don't think it would get to the point where we we could kill Quill pretty quickly. He'll kill him. Mace Windu can reduce health if anything gets out of control. That way we save our troopers for the back wall. We save um, Wampa for the back wall in case we've got an Iden Versio back there. We've still got two GLs and gas to deal with stuff. So I don't feel too bad about this. Let's go. Sortie Revive can't be prevented. I think JML is the only GL he's beating at the moment. So Solo Sidious can beat JML. Stun. Um, okay, let's get in there and get him out of here. OK. 
Okay. So many damage over times. I just kill IG-11 because reasons. Okay, take in Revan here. Get a little protection back. Fifty-five banners, not fantastic, but you know, Grievous kind of known for stealing banners. And let's see if the Iden team's back here. If it's not, then I kind of yeah. Interesting, interesting. We've got the uh, Luke Bastila team back here. Um, this team, we use Sith Eternal, we link him up, we just gain mastery until the battle's almost over, and then we nuke him down, right? There's no Hermit Yoda here. If Hermit Yoda's in the mix, it's really bad. But with only Wat Tambor, I think we're good for a Sith Eternal counter here. The front wall I remember being pretty easy, so it, I don't think there's a whole lot of stuff we have to save. We still got a lot of tools in the toolbox. So eh, we could use our Sith Okran here, right? Gain offense equal to defense and then lose defense. I don't mind that. Of course, it doesn't do any good, right? Because he's not even. Okay, dark side Sith characters. Sure. 33% accuracy. So bad. All right. We have to reroll some stats on that mod for sure. Let's get in there, link up Bastila, Luke, do basics for a long time, do the alt, finish everything off. Ortiz says, I tested it in squad arena, no chance. Anyone seen if he's beating Seer and Malakos, or do they just have too much tenacity? Malakos has too much damage, right? Like, even with all the tricks in the Sidious Datacron, I think Malakos just does too much damage, right? His damage is nuts. And it ramps. So not only does he have crazy damage, but it ramps, and then he gets that madness ability, and then it ramps some more, and it's like... Brutal. All right, let's heal up. We'll just put it on basic for a little while. Just let characters use their basics. So the gimmick here is that with Bastila's purple protection, even if you drain his protection with Sith Eternal, you kind of can't get rid of that purple protection. And uh, that keeps him with taunt and super annoying. But if we get down to like the final minute of battle, and then we go into our alt, We'll have so much damage at that point that we'll be able to tear through him. That's the gimmick. Just wasting time here. Probably shouldn't have brought the red tank in because he's not really doing anything for us and wasting time. There he goes. He's out. Okay, so this is the boring part. <laughs> Stacking up mastery for like a minute, two minutes, three minutes. 
I just beat Seer Crew Malakos with the Sidious a few minutes ago, says Clue Dogs. Oh, nice. Maybe, but he doesn't do any more damage than a Galactic Legend, and Sidious can survive the timeout with a lot of them in my testing. All right. Well, then he's tougher than I gave him credit for. If someone's done it, then that's the answer. You can go for it. Okay. I think I'll do the alt at a minute 30. That should give us enough time. We'll kill Bastila with the first hit. We'll relink on Wat Tambor. We'll kill him with the second alt. And um, then should be able to take out Luke. All right. There we go. Oh, we killed Wat Tambor with the same hit. That's no good. There we go. We got rid of the purple protection. As long as you hit it hard enough to get rid of the purple protection, you're golden. Done. All right. This Zori team, maybe we use troopers there. This Rex team, maybe CLS. This team here. I could just use a Galactic Legend. But I think we got... Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Maybe it's best if we use our troopers here. His Mara Jade's not fast enough, right? 321 is still pretty fast. Hmm. So, if we're going to use troopers here, we would have to use Veers, Gideon, and Piet. No dark trooper would be available. The other thing we could do, we could put in dark trooper instead of Piet. We wouldn't get Emperor's trap stacks, but we'd be able to drain their turn meter, hit really hard, gain turn meter back. Go through the sequence. Probably better with Dark Trooper, right? And that way we can just target Mara Jade and get her killed. We'll take a look at what she's set up for here. It's 130. Should be doable. We will go to our Trooper Cron. And uh, here's something that gives a bunch of extra offense to troopers. That's good, right? And then get in there and give it a swing. My first match in Kyber 1 looks like a win, says Clue Dogs. Nice! Congrats. Congrats, man. Uh, so for the people hanging out here, uh, it seems like a lot of people have not hit that like button. So if you've joined later on in the stream here, please hit that like button. Click that thing. Get that like button out of here. Click it an odd number of times, please. i got to use the mass assist here because I absolutely have to get a kill on Mara Jade. Okay. Uh, Palpatine next. Let's use this. Uh, oh no. Oh no, this is going badly. Oof. Oof. Troopers are losing, guys. Losing. We lost with our troopers. That's not fun. Okay, let's. Let's. Let's save that and clean it up later um, let's go up front so let's use what we need up front and then we'll come back and kill this stuff
Alrighty. We got a CLS team up here. We can solo this with um, Savage, right? We've done that before. We just have to remember to kill Luke first in this setup. We don't want him and 3PO alone against us. So kill Luke first. Um, crit damage, tenacity, deflection, crit damage, avoidance, potency, deflection, dark side stuff. All right. Let's see if we can get the CLS team killed with a uh, Savage. Hundred and thirty two potency on your Sidious. Nice. Okay. Keep chipping away at Luke here. We are not hitting him as hard as I would hope. This is not fantastic. It's gone wrong. We'll just go ahead and just put it on auto. Um, actually, we need to put it on basic. I'm just gonna click the button. I'll click the button. When he turns yellow, we'll execute. And then from there, we should have the battle. Should have it won. All right, go, go, savage. Savage, oppress. Boop. All right, nice. 58 banner win. We'll take that against the CLS team. That feels very free. Uh, Wampa works here, right? They get a bunch of speed. I don't care. Wampa counterattacks into them and we just kill them. I think this is the, probably the best team that we have for Wampa. We do have Enfys Nest too, though. We could probably just straight up nest this team, right? I don't think we're going to have enough potency on this guy. Special is a stun, right? Oh, no, never mind. Offense down. Buff immunity. And the potency is not that good. 52%. Um, I could use a high banner win, so I'm going to I'm going to give this a try. There's a chance that executioner can execute us if we lose all of our protection and get hit right at the right time. But I'm willing to take that chance to try to get better banners. We'll try to kill the executioner first if we can. We don't want it to come down to uh, just us and... Oh, that's not what I wanted. We don't want it to come down to just us and Executioner because then every time we go, he will be the next character that goes. So we want to try to avoid that if we can. Oof. Man, we keep counterattacking into the uh, pilot over there. I have a feeling we're going to kill that pilot whether we want to or not. Oof, there it was. That was the hit, but it wasn't enough. Well, since we got that out of the way, let's just kill them all. All right. Um, we can do middle skill over here, no foresight. All right, get Phasma out of here. Nice, 58 banners. I'll take that. That's pretty good. 
Uh, some kind of resistance team here. Maybe we could Wampa this. Yeah, let's Wampa. Wampa the resistance team here. We've still got CLS, Mara Jade, 501st. Another Galactic Legend. We've got to figure out what we're going to take in against Starkiller. We could have actually taken Wampa in against Starkiller with Mara Jade dead. That would have been a good move. We could have we could have Wampa Yeah, we could have Wampa the Starkiller. I didn't think of it in time. Nest is one of those relics like Moth Gideon, something I'd like to have but can't find time to do. Enfys Nest, my second favorite non-GL character in the game. How many people know my first, my number one favorite non-GL character in Swigo? People who've been around for a very long time might remember. But my, my two favorite characters in the game, and it's not because of gameplay, it's just kind of because of their kit, who they are, what they do, that, that I, I like them. Okay, maybe Mon Mothma here. Who do we have for Rebel Fighters that we could stuff in this group? We got uh, a couple pretty good ones. So let's, let's let's take this and try to get high banners. Use Mon Mothma's recovery to try to make sure that we get uh, get a good score. We're gonna target Wedge. We'll get an extra character. Throw some bombs out. Put them on fire. Squirt. Um, we'll kill Lando. And then we'll kill Biggs last. I need to get Pow up to Relic sometime too. Pow would be good to have with the, any Moth, Mon Mothma team. Let's try to take away his turn meter. We'll probably crit him and give it right back. Yeah, of course we did. Predictable there. Um, he's going to get to keep taking turns. There's not really a lot we can do about it. But Drogan will take him down. Pew. Nice. Okay, then we've got this uh, this team here. This team here. Vader, Thrawn, Guard. We could do. We could do like 501st or something like that and just crush them. <clears throat> Thrawn team's all we got left. Let's go in the back wall, see what else we got. Put the GL up against that Star Killer team. I feel like. This Zori team can't be that bad, right? Let's let's do gas against the Zori team. I feel like that must work. We got a couple of lame troopers, but gas should kill Zori just with the area effect, right? She's really a weak Zori. So you take in some area effect, you trigger gas, you do the big hit, and Zori should be gone like in literally like in one shot. Gas not known for his high banners, though. Okay. I guess we're going to sit down before we even get a turn with gas. Oh, man. How is this going so badly? And Zori's dead, at least. Right, get some dazes out here. 
get some tax poof. Gas is angry that you killed off his buddies. That's pretty bad banners. That is pretty bad manners and pretty bad banners. All right. So we've got CLS team that I feel like could work here. Hmm. 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 Yeah, CLS team should work here. I hope. See if we've got a Datacron that'll work on these guys. Sure, we'll take a bunch of crit avoidance. Why not? All right, then we got to kill fives first. Should have enough damage, right? Storm Pooper says, Kylo Ren unmasked. That's right. That's right. I love Kylo Ren unmasked. Like, just his kit, to me, is elegant in its simplicity. It's super simple kit. You just tank stuff and heal up while you're tanking and uh, ready, set, go, right? So I like it. I like, I like that it's just a simple kit. Oh dear. Oh dear, dear, dear. Oh man. We're getting wrecked. Getting wrecked. I guess we gotta do that. Go back over here. If Rex gets back around to another turn, we just lose. Yeah. Son of a gun. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. I underestimated that team. Let's try to beat this with a non-JML team, then we can put JML in there. We had that Empire team back up front, right? Let's try resistance. I don't know that resistance is going to get it done, though. What about Fennec? Let's let's think about a Fennec team here. So, just Fennec and the two bros, the two Fets. And, uh, I mean, the target here is just to do damage. It's not to get contract. It's not. It's just dish out tons of damage and kill the enemy team. We're just going to straight up missile right to the face. Just going to kick. It's just about doing damage. One down. Armor shreds. Put him on fire. Ability block. Big, big kick. There we go. All right, big kick. Now I gotta see about this Rex. What is going on here? Hermit Yoda. Bastila. I feel like Bastille is good. Shock T would also be good. Maybe Shock T is even better. Light side enemies, sure. All right, let's go. <laughs> Hugo uh, guessed that it was the snow trooper. Ah, uh, snow trooper. Still, I would say, snow trooper is a fantastic f character to relic early in the game, and it's not because he's like 
the most awesome character there is so much as he is so easy to get and to gear right at the start of the game. You get him almost for free out of the Bronzium packs. The gear that you have to put on him is easy. So that's the deal with the snow trooper. He's just, there's, oh, that's the wrong skill. Come on now. It's just, he's, he, he's so easy to relic and he's good with the troopers. All right, Kellerin Bech. Now we have to save something for the front. We have to, we have to go deal with this Thrawn now. I think I'm a Thrawn now. All right. With Vadar. So we could fight fire with fire and just say Palpatine, Vader, Mara Jade. All right. And just nuke them down. Get a bunch of turns with Vader. Stun them all with Palpatine. Let's go. We've still got Inquisitors too. Maybe we'll take Inquisitors in on the back wall just for funsies. Hey, we can do Force Crush first in this comp. Maybe. Wow. Wow. What went wrong here? I guess I needed to do Merciless Massacre first. Overconfidence kills. Um, steal, life, ability block, get a kill, ability block, shock. Blocking and shocking. We'll do that again. Hit. Yeet. Force crush. All right, we're going to pull it out in the end, but man. So we did force crush. And then his Vader got a turn. I guess I just didn't have enough debuffs. I don't know. That was kind of weird. All right, what do we got left that we could do here that's high banners? Um, I want to try the Inquisitors. Let's see what we have from the rank of the Inquisitorious. I think I put, yeah, uh, I already put three of them on defense, so I only got two. What do I have that could go? You know what? Let's not do this. Let's, let's not do this. Let's do a team that should be more reliable. Just throw the resistance in here. We can put healing immunity on so that we don't have to worry about Chirrut's nonsense. Um, we'll do that first. Stick. Give him the stick. Dadged. Get rid of all that garbage. Give him the stick. Oh! Give him the stick. Blinded. Okay. Keep going. Chugging away. Oh, bang! Stick ray is like... BAM! I'll give you the stick if you ever saw it. Alright. We got ships coming up next. And then we got an account review to talk about. Take a look. Okay, what do we got for ships? Got Leviathan. Oh boy. Well, the only chance we have here is our executor. It's got the Dorito up front. Dorito's not a fantastic matchup for us, but what you gonna do? What are you going to do when they come for you?
Against the Dorito, I think we should use... We need to use the Slave 1 starting lineup. And uh, swing away, right? Where are you on Scythe? That Leviathan counter is pretty solid. Um, Grand Inquisitor is still not reliced, so my Scythe is built up pretty much as good as it can be. Once I get the Grand Inquisitor to relic, uh, well, I'll have a finished Scythe. It will be as good as it'll get. Okay. Get that Dorito. Okay. Double tap. We'll use this with uh, target lock. Stay off me. Nope, oh, there's a Sith fighter. That's not fantastic. Come on, there we go. We got the locked buffs now at least. We can bring in Hounds Atouf. We should be able to keep our capital ship and if they don't kill Slave 1, we should be able to heal that up before they take over our, our capital ship, I think. Oh man, we lost it. We lost it. Oh, we lost our hound's tooth too. It's a disaster. We lose, guys. We have lost this match. Leviathan victorious over us. Not even close. Not even close on this match. Good lord. Yep, we're done. Yikes. <laughs> Obviously needs Joe. Yeah, the tank is fully healed. 100% healed. We really needed to keep that... Um, uh, uh, we really needed to keep that Slave 1 around for another turn. Once that was dead, we pretty much lost our opportunities. Uh, yep, so that's going to be a fail in ships. Darn. Let's see if we can get... What? What just happened? Where's my Millennium Falcon? I, uh, what? What? What just happened? Did I somehow have the Millennium Falcon included in my executor fleet? No? Not available. Do I have the wrong Millennium Falcon on defense? I don't have the Millennium Falcon on defense. What is this? How the heck is Millennium Falcon in this? What is this?
What is that garbage? How is Millennium Falcon in that fleet? I, I don't understand. I'm baffled. I'm stumped. No idea what's going on here. There is no way that I had a Millennium Falcon in this fleet. No way. Well, I have to beat Executor with no Millennium Falcon, I guess. This is ridiculous. I guess we get to find out if I can do it. How do these things happen? Something to do with adding the scythe into the lineup brings in something else without clicking it. <laughs> if you want, if you went to edit to add scythe, it auto fills all remaining spots by the highest GP. I always double check that when I'm setting the scythe on D now. If you want to edit to add the scythe, it auto fills all the remaining spots by the highest GP. But the Millennium Falcon wasn't even showing up in the loadout. It was like sitting over here in a corner somewhere. Anyway, I am quite frustrated by this turn of events. Let's look at our Rebels We'll put the Ghost in as the starting lineup, and we'll bring in these two Rebel ships. We'll bring in, this is Biggie Boy, right? Biggs. Maybe we should put Biggs in. Put Biggs in. And take these three as reinforcements. And uh, if we can kill Xanadu Blood, we're okay. And if we can't, uh, we lose in a hurry. But let's give it a try. Anytime you edit a fleet that isn't full, it opens the, the uh, it fills the spots by default. No, I get that. I get that. But I'm telling you, when I set my defense. I didn't like edit and let it autofill. Oh man, come on. Look at that. Just instantly dead. Oh my guys. I'm gonna kill the tank here too. Okay, let's bring in this guy. Oof. He's going to bring in Houndstooth and it's over. We won't be able to clear the taunt without Millennium Falcon. And we just lose at a hyper accelerated rate here. There is nothing to be done. Okay, well. Just lose, 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 lose. All right. Um, you know, I just playing awful now. I'm just, I'm just playing awful because I could have brought in the profundity here and probably beat this with no problem. But now I got to use like the this fleet instead. All right, we're gonna use it. We're gonna throw in Plo in case we need to. No, we're not. No Plo. We're either gonna win this or we're not. 
save our area effect, bring in comeuppance, hit the other team with a big area effect, and if that works, then we love everything. If it doesn't work, then we're sad for weeks. Okay. All right, how do we cleanse this tank? A spin move here. Protection up, recover, gain deflector shield. This one says, oh wow, that doesn't clear it either. Okay. Huh? Oof. Oof. All right. Try to see if we can get some comeuppance here. Come up, ants. All right, kill everything. There we go. That works. We come up and st successfully for 66 banners. And there's just a whole lot of locator crying at this point because his fleets are messed up. All right, so let's back completely out of here. Let's go entirely back into GAC. Let's go entirely back to edit defense. All right, let's look at this. That's not in there anymore. Right? At least we don't see it in there now. And it puts it right back in. So, as you know what? I wonder if I didn't, like, go back in to look at something later. Wow. So, like, if I went back in to check my defense later and opened it up like that, then it just randomly throws that ship in. So, what do I have to do to avoid that scenario? It won't let me put another ship in here? Why, why can't I put a fourth ship in? That's messed up. That's messed up, y'all. So we pretty much got to take this thing on offense from now on because it messes up your defense? Is that what I'm hearing? Scythe just ghost added a ship. This, yeah, puts the MILF in when you click Scythe. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna have to get that Inquisitor to Relic, get this thing off of defense, we'll put the Executor back on defense, start taking this fleet on offense, so that at least we won't have that problem on defense anymore. I guess that's what we gotta do. Yo. All right, now I gotta go find, uh, what's his name, Adam, was it? That uh, one of the account looked at. Adam says, all right, let's take a look here. At uh, Dece number, 298. Four, five, nine, five, four, five. Search. Creamy wheat. Is that you, Adam? Uh, I spent a bit on the Beskar bundle hyperdrive, but still curious. I struggle with a lot of conquests, but I just got out of Carbonite GAC. All right, creamy wheat. Let's see your inventory. What do you got here for shippies? Got the starting three. We're working on executrix, built up endurance. Okay, we've got some ships here. 
So you didn't buy the light speed bundles like for the rebel characters? Um, can you still buy the light speed bundle for Sidious? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's take a look at what's in. Ooh, we got to get some carbonite circuit boards on the Loquiter account. Okay. So you can buy the light speed bundles. Oh, they were in here as gifts and they're not anymore? What is wrong with these people? I mean, they just need to leave these light speed bundles in the game for people to purchase. Why are they here sometimes and not here sometimes? It is ridiculous. It is not increasing revenue. You need to just put the light speed bundles in the game, leave them there so that everybody at any time can have access to those resources. I don't know. That makes me a little bit angry. I don't understand at all. Offers. I'm going to look in the web store and see if there's, no, there's nothing different in the web store. Okay, so I was going to say there's a bundle with a bunch of rebels that would be nice for you to grab if you wanted to, but uh, never mind. You know, it's not available. Jerks. Okay, so IG-2000, Relic, up to six stars. The Hound's Tooth farmed up towards six stars. Slave One's done. Tide Advance done. Characters, Dengar. We got Grief Karga ready to go. Mandalorian, Quill, IG, and Cara Dune from that bundle. So, is that everything? Vader, Boba, Piet, Dengar, IG-88. We need Bosk still. So, Bosk has to go. And... Uh, is there one more character? Piet needs to be Relic 8. Okay. But we're close. You're close. You're close to, to getting this ship. And as long as you've got Beskar Mando unlocked, you can build his ship. That'll That's okay. Why are Jade five stars? So while you're working on these characters and taking them to Relic, you can work on some other stuff, right? So you built up Qui-Gon, which is good. Some Imperial Troopers, which is good. Um, I think in the background you need to be working on the CLS team. So... CLS team is one of the most efficient things for conquest. And even if you just relic CLS, you can spread his stats around with Chupio. And um, I think I'm going to test it on the Lex account if I can. But I think a relic CLS with, uh, you know, mediocre gear on the other characters is still, you know, a win in conquest for most of normal. Um, I think the Malik team, the, if you find a Revan team that has Malik in it, then the CLS team kind of falls on its face. But other than that, you, you can kill most of the stuff with CLS. So I think that would be an opportunity for you. Get your executor. I would, I would work on the CLS team. And then I think Jabba or Leia... Honestly, I think Jabba is the most high-value journey in the game right now. So I would say follow up your executor journey with Jabba. So you, you can select that journey, start looking at the characters that you need for Jabba. You need Hermit Yoda and Wampa, of course, so you'll have to start buying those out of the shop if you want to do that, that route. But, uh, yeah, I think... I think build a CLS team as the first follow-up to uh, to the executor, and then go Jabba. That's what I would recommend. We could take a look at mods here. It's always fun to look at mods for somebody who's been in the game for like eight months. <laughs> 
248. Yeah. Mods are so wonderful. Early in the game, you just got nothing. It feels like such a struggle. 273 on Piet. Ooh. Yeah. Somebody's been skipping mod day. Gotta get, gotta get on that, brother. Gotta can't can't skip leg day when you go to the gym. <laughs> Adam says I have to get Chirpa out of the cantina, but I think I have Ewok shards uh, to get C3PO, and I have Chewbacca. Um, I took Chirpa to six stars. I worked on some of his shards for seven stars, but if you can get C3PO unlocked at, at five stars maybe get him to six stars. Um, you got a lot of building on the CLS team to do before you have to get that seventh star on 3PO. So you're more worried about getting CLS, getting him built up. CLS, Han, Chewie are the core of, of what you want. And you can leave Chupio and C3PO at less stars and less gear and wait until last on them. They kind of you know, just hang out with the team. Uh, C-3PO does almost everything he's going to do, <laughs> like, at pretty low gear, and put uh, put his Zeta on him. And he, he does as much as he's going to do. Putting a relic on him just makes him harder to kill. Makes it so that he doesn't die to area effect. But um, but he doesn't do damage, right? So the, the relic is is optional there till you can till you can afford it. But no, I like the account. I like what you're doing with it. Working toward Executor, almost there. Qui-Gon, Omicron, ready to go. You got Mar Jade in the background here who's, you know, been worked on. You did your troopers. Um, I'm guessing that you've got the Challenge Tier 1 stuff under control for... Oh, you did Snow Trooper. Oh, man, I love you. I saw that earlier, but you know, shout out to Snow Trooper. Yeah. So you're just mowing through those assault battles, no problem. You got Piat Relict as well. You got good troopers. Yeah, you got good troopers. You put in the range trooper as the fifth, or Moff Gideon, or even Aiden. You're in good shape. Not much else to say, man. Is there any other advice that you would need or want? Anything else you got questions specifically about? <laughs> Mods were pretty messed up there for a while. Yeah, you got to get settled in and, and get some mods going. All right, let's get over to the Lex Talionis account. And uh, let's play a quick GAC over here. We've got a 3 million galactic power opponent against our, like, million galactic power. But, uh, you know, that's just how it goes these days. Some Geo's Relic, Vader, Palpatine, it's got Darth Trail with the Zeta already stuff like that ship wise he's unlocked the chimera but it's just the starting ships so we will take a look and see if we can get some wins over here he already full cleared us the board is empty so we got to try to be somewhat efficient here this bosk team Uh, maybe we'll use Imperial Troopers here. Zam does not have the Omicron, so the team isn't very scary. Some Jedi under Bastila. I feel like I can just play Jedi under Qui-Gon. And this is under control, right? I could also potentially do Phoenix. Maybe Phoenix is even better. What's Phoenix look like? Who do I have? I, I think we have to use Rex and Choppa. That doesn't look very strong though, does it? Doesn't look very strong. Okay, let's use the troopers on the bounty hunters and see what's on the back wall. Start there. All right, Imperial Troopers. Uh, boop, boop, boop. 
Let's go. Add a Datacron. Oh wait, we don't have Datacrons. <laughs> we have like three relic characters in the whole account. Okay, we've got tons of turn meter. We'll reduce Vosk's armor. And then we'll just drop the bomb right here on Vosk. Ooh, that may have been a mistake. This Vosk is a little chonkier than I gave him credit for. We got him though. No worries. Kill this Zam. And then uh, Boba Fett. Hey, Boba Fett, you got turn meter, buddy? Oh, wait, no, you don't. Nice, 67 banners. Max banners for troopers. Love me some troopers. Some rebels. With Mon Mothma not in the lead. That's bizarre. We could do CLS team here, or we could do... We could do Vader. Um, what are all the rebels we've got here? I feel like we're just gonna put Chupio in, but Chewbacca. It's really low gear. Yeah, I think we just put Chupio in here. Try to get these guys to hit harder. Let's go. We'll try to crush. Akbar first. If you're a squid, duck. Uh, farm boy Luke. Ooh, farm boy Luke didn't want none of that. All right, here we go. I'm just doing basic stuff. Okay. I'll blind you, farm boy. I should have blinded him earlier so he couldn't stun me. Not a big deal though, either way. Ooh, Luke, you go, buddy. All right, so then we got the front with the, with the Qui-Gon team, I hope. Put some Jedi in here. For anybody not familiar with the Qui-Gon Jinn Omicron, it says you add 30 speed to your Jedi and then they get 30 times speed in offense so for a low level team like this with relatively low offense I should have put another Galactic Republic Jedi in here I wasn't thinking about it um, but uh, but yeah you get 30 times your your offense or your, I'm sorry, 30 times your speed. Which means these Jedi with almost no gear hit really hard. Uh, your Jedi can't be killed until Qui-Gon's killed. So in this case, my Jedi are low life, but they can't get killed. Oh, I thought, I thought that attack was going for Qui-Gon. <laughs> I thought it was over. So we'll just, uh, you know, try to keep Qui-Gon alive here. Smack. Not a very firm smack. <laughs> Gear 12 Anakin with bad mods. But hey, he's got like 6,000 attack, right? Because Qui-Gon. <laughs> All right. Bang. Come on, get that Bastila. Just try to keep keeping Qui-Gon alive. Take her buffs off. So the Qui-Gon is not gonna give the best banners, as you can see, but uh, you can certainly beat teams a lot better than what you got. Alrighty, let's see what we got for fleets here. He's got a relic, ah, uh, relic seven. Relic seven tie advanced. Scary. 
Um, okay. We'll take in an assortment of different um, reinforcements here. We just got to get his tie advance killed before it has a chance to kill our whole team. So even though Anakin and Ahsoka are a threat on their own, we, we Vader's just going to hit so hard every time he pulls the trigger that we got to got to deal with him first. Okay, and as always, Relic 7 Vader completely made out of glass. Man, that ship is so much galactic power and it's honestly so bad. Okay, let's do this. Cleanse their buffs, target Anakin, and get him dead. Get out of here. Oof! That Ahsoka. That was a big hit. All right. Um, we won't have alt, y'all. We won't have alt. We'll have to bring in another reinforcement next time. Oh, that's not good. Oh, it's weak. Okay. It's pretty weak. Uh, let's do this. Let's put the buzz droids over here on uh, the Fet Man. The Fet Man. I didn't say what you think I said. I'll put words into my mouth. Okay. Boba Fett also reliced on his account? think still don't have the alt oh my goodness so long to get to the alt on this guy he gets his alt first I lose okay <laughs> I don't know that we've got enough power to deal with this but uh, we're not giving up Coming in with some more stuff. Bring in more stuff. Sure, let's go. Let's give it another try. Um, he wins. You know, we lost that fleet battle and therefore he wins the GAC, right? So we don't have a chance of winning, but uh, you know, it's free money. Don't want to leave free money lying around. If we can, oh, ouch, come on now. Ahsoka hits way too hard. All right, die, Ahsoka, die. Okay, come on now. I've only got three capital ships, right? So in my entire inventory, there's only three which means if I can't clean it up with this, even if I had other ships, <laughs> I don't have any other capital ships. Yikes. I, I, I should check the Chimera journey, right? Because we, we might be close on the Chimera journey. Um, can't remember exactly what I need for that. Let's go take a look real quick. Um, beep, 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 beep. Chimera. Um, oh wow, okay. So with the five star of Rebel ships that I've got, I believe I qualify. Got check marks and all this stuff. Have to get a couple more of them to seven stars to get the Chimera all the way to seven stars, but can we just, can we, can we get it unlocked at like, does it unlock at four stars? Mission units can't be removed. Uh, sure. Let's see. Let's see what we've got here. I think I remember this mission being pretty easily. Did you have home one on defense? Yeah, yeah, we got home one on defense. Target over here. K 
kill everything with one hit. Yay, yeah, good job. Look at that. We've got Chimera Shards coming in. Rolling in. Please remember to hit that like button if you haven't done that already. Help me out. I'd appreciate it. Alright. I don't know when I'm going to be able to invest in the Chimera though because I'm like out of fleet currency. And uh, if I have fleet currency I think there's <laughs> plenty of ships I would work on other than the Chimera. I mean it gives me another capital ship but I don't think I'll be able to do much to improve it. I think we unlocked Thrawn on this account didn't we? Did we take him all the way? To, I don't even remember. Good heavens. I, I I feel like I unlocked him, but I don't know if I got the seventh star on Thrawn. Because my Rex wasn't very good and I didn't have uh, any other Phoenix up to seven stars. I think that was it. I didn't, I didn't have enough seven star Phoenix to finish him. Okay. Victory. Easy so far. Two more to go. And we'll have it unlocked, I believe. Unlocks at 145, I think. All right, here we go. Oh my goodness, survived the initial barrage. Okay. Uh, sure. Oops. I thought, sure, that was going to be enough damage. Damages. I right, do basic over here, put it on auto, let it rip. All right. Well, I'm going to finish this out and get the Chimera ready to unlock. Um, and then I'm going to move on and uh, do some other stuff tonight. So I appreciate all you guys coming out to hang out with me and watch. Sorry on Lokwitter that I uh, got the fleet deployment messed up, but maybe other people who will get the scythe in the future have now learned a valuable lesson about putting it on defense and not letting the, letting it pull a reinforcement in for you. I didn't know that was even a thing. I don't know how my Millennium Falcon got stuck in that fleet, but uh, now you guys are aware of it, so hopefully you won't make the same uh, mistake or have the same issue. Hope that's the case. But uh, with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you all for coming out. Please remember, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more stuff like this in the future. Use the notification bell so you know when I'm doing my live streams. And of course, join us over on the Discord if you're not part of that already. It's a really good community. A lot of friendly people willing to help out new players, mid-game players, give advice on account building. There's an Ask Lokwitter channel, so you can ask questions. Uh, I'll answer them when I get the opportunity. So, hope to see you over there. Links are always up above and down below, and you can get on over there and join the group of Inquisitors. I would appreciate it if you could do that. All right, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next Holocron.